Hello there, my name is Michael Maynard and welcome back to Gorilla Picking. Now, today folks, we are going to do something that I have never done before and uh, as far as I know, nobody in the lock picking community does this. Um, what we are going to do is do a first look stripped down at a new lock. Now, um, this is a fascinating lock. It is a thing called a C, so that's spelled C-E-I, five colors lock. It's it's Chinese, okay? Um, and um, the particular model of this one is a thing called a 385T. 385T, I, I think maybe you can see that there. So what makes this lock special? Well, it is... It's actually the best, on the face of it anyway, <clears throat> it's the best quality Chinese lock I think I've ever seen. Um, it is a Euro. It is beautifully made. So the tolerances um, for this thing, that that just feels absolutely lovely. Okay, And the locking system, if you have a bit of a look at the key here, uh, is, well, it's a bit of an eye-opener, frankly. Now... Um, you will you will notice almost immediately that this is a knockoff, or it's at the very least based on my beloved Multilock MT5 Plus. So what we've got is a whole lot of pin and pin chambers, and we have got a sidebar track up the side there as well. But uh, in some ways, guys, they've actually gone further in, on the face of it anyway than the Multilock. So here's the MT5 Plus. Um, we have got five pin and pin chambers, we have got one alpha element at the back here, and then we have got a five position sidebar slider up the side here. Now, um, if we believe this key, what these guys have got is a one, two, three, four, five, six pin and pin elements, two movable alpha elements down the bottom here, and an unknown number of um, sidebar sliders up the side here. So it looks like the Chinese have gone absolutely all out with this thing. Now on top of that, um, this thing is construction keyed. So the way that you buy new locks in China is that you have a key, or in this case two, which are construction keys. So these work straight out of the gate. Um, and then you have another few keys, and in this case five, and they're all different colors, hence the name five colors, which do not yet work. So um, the idea is that you give the two construction keys to the building contractor or the painters or whatever that are, that are doing your house. Um, they get in and out of your property using the construction keys until such time as they are finished doing the work. Then what you do, there is, I think, a break-off element in one of these pins. I haven't had a look inside yet, so I don't know. But if this works like every other construction key lock out of China, um, there is a break-off element that you then snap by forcing this key the first time you use it. And what that then does is enables these five keys and disables these ones. So the builder and the painter now can't get into your house even if they wanted to. So it's a very well thought out lock and it's a very well made lock. That, just in the hand, it feels like for all the world an Asa lock out of Germany or, you know, a, a multi-lock out of Israel. It feels bloody good. So... Do the insides live up to the outside potential and possibilities? Well, the answer is I don't know. So what we're going to do here, folks, we are going to strip this thing down on camera and uh, we are going to figure out exactly how it works. Now, the first thing I'm going to do with this, um, this is a double-ended euro, so I have got two sides to this thing. Um, what I'm going to do is cut this in half I am going to reserve the short half, so I'm going to put that to one side and not deal with that. Um, but we are going to pull apart this longer side here and see what we got in it. So, next order of business is for me to uh, get this thing cut up. So, give me about two seconds, guys. Bang. Right, there we go. Okay, so we're now in two bits. 
that's out of the way as well. Now what we've got to do is figure out how to get this thing apart without it exploding into a million pieces. And uh, your guess is as good as mine there, folks. So, let's get the key in. Key rotates. Now generally, the, uh, with, with a dimple lock, the safest way to get the core out, if you don't know what's going on in there, is to rotate it 90 degrees so that the edge of the key is up against the pins. So we are going to ram that in and turn that 90 degrees. Okay, we are in business. Now, let's put Let's put the core in a little holder for the time being and just count pins. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six right enough. Now, interestingly, it looks, let me zoom in here, guys. Um, it looks to me like the alpha elements there are actually tied up with the outer segment of these two last pin and pin elements. So I'm thinking maybe this might not actually be as complex as we think. Okay, all right, let's put that aside. And let's have a bit of a look and see what the core has got for us. Okay, folks, well, there is the pinning for the pin and pin elements of this lock. Now, there are a couple of things I want to point out to you guys, and we're going to go into more detail on this later on. But uh, first and foremost, absolutely all standard drivers. So we don't have any serrations, we don't have any spools, and we don't have any lips on the little um, inner elements there either. Okay, now for the outer segments of the key pins we have one two three four very again i'm going to use the word standard looking elements here okay and then five and six now these this is where it gets interesting um we don't actually have extra pins here guys i thought this was going to be a bit more complicated than it is um, but the interactive element on the key simply interacts with these last two outer drivers. So it's not as if we've got these plus another two elements. These are the interactive elements that need picking. Then we've got all these inners, again, pretty basic looking inners, uh, except the one in uh, chamber three here. And if I hold that up to the camera, you will see that this is the construction keying one. So this has got a snap-off element. Can you see just there at the top? There is a little waste on that pin. And then um, what that means is that when we're using the construction key, it's going to use the shear line at the top here. Then when we put the real keys, one of those five colored ones in for the first time, it's going to push this up a little further than it would normally right so further than the construction key would push it and then you snap it you break it and um, what that does is snaps it at the snap off point that shortens that key pin by a millimeter or whatever it is which means that your black construction key will no longer work but your five standard keys will right very very cool and very very simple I've got to say okay so all that remains now is to work out how the sidebar works. Okay guys, well we've got everything stripped down now and man was that interesting. Um, this is a lock with a couple of secrets and in the way of an awful lot of Chinese stuff, 
this lock is more show than go. I really wish that, I mean, they've got it half right, you know, they've gone half of the way there, but they just haven't gone all the way. Now, just let me tell you what I think about this, all right? Um, first and foremost, it is genuinely a six pin, pin in pin, so that's 12, um, 12 pins lock with a four slider sidebar. So you can see the four sidebar chambers across the side here. Now, one thing that was very interesting was that when I was pulling the sidebar sliders out, I couldn't actually get number two out of there. Now, that turns out to be because the sidebar sliders are cheap and nasty and had been stamped out of, uh, and I'm just gonna measure it actually so I can uh, tell you guys how thick it is. Um, they have been stamped out of 0.64 of a mil thick metal sheet and uh, the quality on these is not good. So here is a sidebar slider. Let's zoom in on that so you can see it a little bit better. Um, all four of them look pretty much like this. So here is the little knobble that interacts with the laser track on the side of the key. Here is the notch that the, uh, so that's the gate basically, that the sidebar has to drop into. And you will see that the, the pin itself, the slider itself, is really not terribly well made at all. So probably um, this one in number two was uh, a little bit bigger than the rest. Maybe the manufacturing tolerances were a bit crap. Maybe it was just bent a little bit, who knows, but it was put in there, it was it was forced in there a little bit, maybe at, at the time of um, manufacture, and it ain't coming out. So, a little bit of a disappointment in terms of the quality there, but again, <laughs> I don't know why I'm surprised. Uh, now, the other thing that turned out to be very interesting indeed is that it isn't as complex as they make out on the key. So, when you look at the key, it really does imply there that you're going to have six pin and pin elements and then two uh, alpha elements like the two the, the extra element, yeah, the MT5 Plus. Um, that's just not the case. So what happens here is that these uh, floating elements on the key, these two things at the end here, those two things actually interact with the outer element on these pin and pin chambers at the end here. So we haven't got anything extra, we've just got an active element to set those two. So in actual fact, this isn't any more difficult than picking a standard six pin, pin and pin lock, and then dealing with the sidebar, which I think will probably be a piece of cake, but we'll soon find out. So, um, the other interesting feature is that sidebar, uh, not the sidebar, my God, um, the construction keying. So again, what happens here is that um, the, well, let's put it in there and, and, and show you. Um, we have got the outer on three and the inner on three and the inner on three has got this little snap off element at the top. So when we are using a construction key, that little element there is flush so that operates the lock as it should then when we put a operating key in for the first time so this is the uh, the key that belongs to the homeowner now um, what's going to happen here you can see that that little knobble sits up proud so it's now sitting up above the shear line now the first time you use this and force it round, that little piece there is going to get snapped off. It is then going to get dumped into here and if it was in per, uh, position four or two or one, of course you can see it would get put in uh, in the holes in, in those corresponding holes next to the chambers um, and then we'll sit there for the rest of the lock's life. It has disabled that but the uh, the Client's operating key will now operate the lock. Good system, uh, but uh, yeah, but a little bit crude. Right, okay, well, having said all that, 
what we now need to do is work out how to pick this thing. I do not think that this is going to be a difficult lock to pick. It has never been picked before on camera, guys. So um, the next video that you see on this will be me doing a first pick. And uh, with any sort of luck, that's going to be up in the next day or two. I would love to know what you guys think about this lock. I would love to hear your comments. I would like you to comment down below and tell me what you think of this thing. I'd like you to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I'd like you to hit that bell button thing so that you get uh, notifications. And I would like to thank you for being on the journey with me, learning how this little bastard works. Thanks for watching, guys. My name's Michael Maynard. This is Gorilla Picking, and this is the C385T. Thanks, guys.